when Subaru guys say they're upgrading the turbo on their WRX. Today's video is brought to you by Athletic Greens. AG1 by Athletic Greens has me really excited about simplifying my health routine. It includes 75 ingredients, including vitamins, minerals, superfoods, and probiotics. If you're like me, you're probably not getting all of the necessary vitamins and minerals that you need every day. That's where AG1 comes in. You just take a scoop of this every single day and you're all good to go. It also contains a whole bunch of immune supporting and gut supporting uh, ingredients. It has natural occurring enzymes that support metabolism and enhance nutrient absorption. Show you guys how easy this is. You just take yourself a scoop, dump that guy into eight to 12 ounces of water. Comes with a nice little bottle. Go ahead and give this guy a shake. This stuff has a whole bunch of energy supporting ingredients. Give you a boost of energy to get through your day. You can also replace a cup of coffee if you guys are out there drinking coffee. I actually take it along with my breakfast before I go to the gym. Yes, I still go to the gym even though it might not look like it. I'm doing my best, boys. But uh, the AG1 definitely gives me a pretty good boost of energy. It's also a good uh, like post-workout if you're uh, interested in that as well. It has a lot of stuff that's good for muscle recovery, things like that. Just a lot of good stuff in here. Simple as that, tastes great. Also, if you're on the go, AG1 makes these nice little travel packs so you can bring a couple of these guys with you wherever you're at, throw them in a water bottle. You'll have all of your vitamins and minerals and your little energy boost to go. But yeah, guys, it's as simple as that. One scoop a day or one packet a day and you're good to go. If you guys wanna get started on AG1, all you have to do is go to athleticgreens.com slash boosterboys to get started on your order. Be sure to use our link though because Athletic Greens is going to be giving you guys a year supply of immune supporting vitamin D3 and K2 and five free travel packs here. So get on there, get yourself some AG1. Thank you to Athletic Greens for sponsoring today's video. What's up guys? Today we are working on the K-Swapped FRS here. So you guys saw we got this thing done not too long ago. It's been running great ever since we got that K-Series in there. We really haven't done too much with the car after we got it done. We did take it to the Freedom Factory not too long ago. And we tried to drift this thing around, but between the untuned naturally aspirated K-Series it's in the car and the very wide rear tires on the back. This thing just did not have enough power to make any real wheel speed or do anything crazy for that matter. You could just kind of slide it around in first gear, but you know, it was nothing crazy. I didn't really get to practice drifting hardly at all. I felt like the car was way underpowered. Um, we wanted to try to put it on a dyno and tune the engine naturally aspirated and squeeze as much horsepower as we could out of the K series here without a turbo on it and put a narrower rear tire on the back and see if that would help it at all go back out just have some fun with the car and kind of go from there but i also recently got pulled over in this thing because apparently the exhaust is too loud and it's actually the second time i've been pulled over in the car the first time was the day we literally got it running and driving for the first time we took it out on the road and since the car didn't have any plates or anything like that on it and it stands out i got pulled over had to deal with all of that i got the car registered everything's good to go and then not too long after that, I get pulled over again because apparently it's too freaking loud, which is crazy because the hatch has a hood exit exhaust. The NSX has a hood exit exhaust. Wago doesn't even have a hood on it and it has the exhaust coming right out of the turbo. And the Routacy has a hood exit exhaust. All these cars, the Sidekick, all of them, they're very loud. And we've never been pulled over in any of them except for this one. For some reason, this thing is a cop magnet. And you know, I think the only difference this one has over all of the others is that it doesn't have a turbo on it. So, you know, I'm putting all these things together in my head. We wanted to uh, put it on the dyno naturally aspirated, squeeze some more power out of the K-Series. You know, that just sounds like a lot of extra work when we can easily make some more power if we just slap a turbo on this thing. And apparently that might also make it quiet enough to not be noticed by the cops because, you know, turbos act as a pretty good muffler. So I've come to the conclusion that the FRS needs turbo. It was gonna happen anyways. And uh, today's the day we get started on that boy. So we got her on the lift here. We got the headers pulled off because we've just been kind of mocking up how we want the turbo to sit. I'm thinking I want that guy nice and clean right up here. And I already went ahead and ordered some parts to get a manifold knocked out for this thing. And it's basically mocked up here. I just need to start tacking it up and mocking things up in the car and making sure everything fits how I want it to and go from there. But if you look right here, we got ourselves a nice, simple log manifold. So this is just a K-Series exhaust flange. We got some Schedule 10 T's right here, Schedule 1090. And uh, I got all these guys cut to fit nicely on that flange there. And we are going to be adding an extension to this T3 flange. This is a nice billet uh, piece from Shipbox Supply. So that guy will be welding on like so. We'll add our wastegate. 
and we'll be good to go guys if you remember when i first did the turbo kit on the mr2 when i case swapped it a while back it was a very simple log manifold i made 450 horsepower on that setup no issues whatsoever my original plan was to make a nice tubular manifold and you know put the turbo maybe a little more front and center here but i really would like the turbo to sit kind of right in this cavity right here and there's plenty of room around it and i just figured the simplest way to do it and the cheapest way to do it would be a quick nice little log manifold but with that being said i'm going to go ahead and get this thing all tacked up and go from there Dang guys, check it out. This thing is looking sweet. Went ahead and got the turbo kind of mocked up to the manifold there, just making sure everything is fitting how we want it to. I actually got this done last night, getting the manifold just tacked together and everything and threw it on the car just to make sure we have room for everything and it's sitting where I want it to be. And that is looking awesome. We have plenty of room to run the exhaust down and out this hole right here. The charge pipe will come off of the turbo right there, go through this hole right there. We have a nice big intercooler on the way that will fill up the front of the bumper here. These have a lot of room in the front bumper, so we don't have to worry about space on the intercooler. And then the other end will come out of this hole into our throttle body and we'll be good to go. But yeah, I'm really happy with how that came out. Got it knocked out really quick. That's why I love these log manifolds. You know, they might not be the most efficient on the top end of high horsepower cars, but for this car, it will be great. They're more than capable of making enough power to huck a rod out of this thing. So I'm really excited about that. Just so simple, got that done quick, nice little happy log manifold down there. So we're gonna go ahead and pull that apart and get everything fully welded up. Now that we are happy with how that fits, there's some things I still need to uh, finalize. I wanna grind this a little better, make the fit on that a little nicer, but we're gonna have to get all this welded up. I need to knock a hole still into this uh, T fitting right here for this guy, get all that stuff welded up, and then we can put it back on for final assembly. And then we'll have to pull it off again, actually, to do the wastegate because I don't have that yet. But at least the manifold is going to be done, hopefully, today. I was also looking at the belt because we have shredded a couple of these. So for whatever reason, one of the pulleys either isn't lined up or something's a little off. So we're taking a look at that as well and uh, getting the belt fixed. But yeah, boys, going to go ahead and pull that back off and get that manifold all welded up. If you look down our road right here, we have this oil trail that goes all the way up to the shop door and uh that was from the shopping go-kart we tried to drive it around a little bit do some more tuning and the oil feed line to the pump it's like on the bottom of the engine there's a little fitting on there that feeds the oil pump and then the oil pump then feeds the turbo the hose popped off of that guy luckily i noticed it while it was over there in the grass and that whole trail was just from me pushing it back and then it made a little mess right there big old trail of oil but basically the shopping go-kart lost almost all of its oil and we have just been working on this thing a little bit today as well not a huge update on this thing but we're changing out all of the oil lines going to the turbo to an fittings we did just have this very cheap soft tubing that is not rated for oil at all i don't even know what this tubing's for but it's very squishy and when it heats up it kind of falls apart this pump doesn't really build that much pressure but it was enough to pop the line off of that guy right there after everything got hot and we lost a good amount of oil. So like I said, we're just changing everything over to AN lines right now. We took the fitting out of this guy. We got that tapped out to a dash eight MPT. Got a nice 90 in there. That looks way cleaner now. And that goes to the top of the oil pump. And then we just got to do another dash four line to connect those guys and then a dash four return. And then we'll be good to go. But quick little shopping go-kart update for the day. I'm really glad you guys were excited to see this thing back in the videos. So while I've been busy working on the FRS, why it's been in here, Working on the race truck, 
plug it on. And uh, got her pretty much back together here. Yeah. Engine and so, everything's back in, all the accessories back on there. Yeah, engine's in for the final time, turbo kit final time, a lot of cooling stuff. Um, just kind of mocking everything up so that I can figure out how long the wires I need to run to everything. And also just, you know, running through, making sure I have all the sensors accounted for as I'm building a very complex wiring harness for this thing. So just want to make sure everything's in place and nothing gets overlooked. But yeah, it's really been coming together here. As you guys saw, turbo kit got done a while ago and then Everything else was just pretty straightforward, getting it back together once the built transmission showed up and the converter. Yeah. And like Wyatt just said, he's been over here on his laptop all day, kind of going through a wiring diagram, just labeling out where every single pin needs to go. Yep. It's got length, color gauge, size, what it does, everything's pretty complex. So it's uh, very comprehensive though. So I'm not gonna miss anything, which is nice, but you can see this is, this is the engine side of the harness, so it accounts for everything, all the splices and everything. And then you can go over here, and this is the internal side of the harness. This is what connects to the ECU. So, Literally yeah. Literally typed all of that out. <laughs> yep, just been going through it, man. It's, <laughs> it's definitely a lot. But been having a lot of fun over here. Yeah, it's a real joy. But it'll make sure that everything's accounted for and everything's you know in there. And if I ever need to go through and check for something, it's easy to come in here and look exactly where that wire is supposed to be. So a lot of work, but it'll make for a really nice end product. Well, I'll let you get to it and I'm gonna go back and finish up this manifold. Sounds good. All right guys, so I just got this guy all welded up here and now we need to cut a hole right here for the T flange to go on like so. And to do this, we are going to be using our brand new plasma cutter that we got from HDP. We got this guy over here. This is their new micro cut plasma cutter. We've actually had this thing for a good month or two now and this thing works great. We've actually cut a couple of half inch thick pieces of steel with it and it cuts right through it like butter. And uh, yeah, it's always nice having a plasma cutter around. We used to have one uh, back at the Colorado shop. That thing was kind of cheap and didn't work the best, but this one works great. We just got our air hooked right up into it. And uh, yeah, we're gonna blast this hole out real quick, make it nice and easy. Oh, God. <laughs> Big fan. This thing has some power. Give her a whirl here. Go ahead and clean that up a little bit with the die grinder. We'll be good to go. Yeah, that's so much faster than a hole saw. It's a lot faster than a hole saw. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> There she is, boys, our nice little log manifold for the FRS. I think it came out pretty good, not gonna lie. Nice and simple, so now all we gotta do is add the wastegate on the bottom here, but we'll do that once the wastegate comes in. But as you can see, that guy will just go on like so. Just like that, and I also got both uh, flanges 
belt sanded nice and flat so we know we're not going to have any sort of exhaust leaks and the frs here is getting a brand new gtx 3580 2r turbo ski the other one that was on there was just a mock-up turbo um, but this one is brand freaking new nice and shiny and then we'll get all this stuff bolted on and the guy will sit just like so and decent do. yeah it looks really good yeah get her bolted on and go from there nice well there she is with her brand new turb ski and her freshly fabbed up log manifold there that looks so freaking good guys i think brz's and frs's all of them should have came with inline fours from the factory because that looks right that looks sick so that is done like i said just got to get the wastegate on the manifold there and then the manifold will be 100 percent ready to go got to get a couple more components on the way to finish up the turbo kit the intercooler and all that stuff should be here any day now so we can keep working on that as we go but yeah got a lot knocked out doing that manifold and stuff we got a oil sandwich plate right there as well for our oil feed and then we'll have to get the drain and all that good stuff made we'll have to upgrade the injectors and then that's about it retune this thing put it on the dyno and actually make some real power but that is going to do it for this video Hope you guys are excited i mean this was one of the only cars we had laying around over here that is naturally aspirated and you know we can't have that so got that turbo going on to the brz here and it looks so good so that's it for this video guys see you later